<laughs> is this good? Good enough, I guess. Can I make it symmetrical? <laughs> <laughs> this is this is what we have to do guys it is the only way put the sound up put this on the back it's looking pretty symmetrical <laughs> wait it's actually not there we go <laughs> let's start with act three let's go a silly girl naps by her flowers it is quite likely that she tired herself out with a variety of silly antics, as silly girls are often known to do. She may have a silly name too, or maybe not. It is hard to say for sure without asking her. But since she's slumbering peacefully, it would be a shame to wake her up. You may as well just give her a name right now. Farm Stink Butlass. Uh, I guess? I guess her name is Farmstink. You try to roust Farmstink from her slumber, but she is really down for the count. It looks like she's holding some sort of note. Retrieve arms from- They're right there! In plain sight! Look, they're flashing red! There's subs? What pumpkin? You see no pumpkin, and frankly, it would, it's hard to imagine that there was ever a pumpkin in plain sight or otherwise. There's subs. Anyway, that would be a really terrible thing to do to poor sweet farm stink. Farm stink? That is incredibly silly and a little bit rude. My name is... Jade Harley. Your name is Jade. You have just woken from a restful nap, and as usual, you have no recollection of having fallen asleep. You have quite a number of interests. So many, in fact, you have trouble keeping track of them all, even with an assortment of colourful reminders on your fingers to help you sort everything out in your mind. Nevertheless, when you spend time in your garden atrium, the only thing on your mind is your deep passion for horticulture. What will you do? Jade, it is suggested that you play a silly flute refrain. suck at this thing. Maybe you should try playing an instrument that you actually know how to play instead, like the one in your bedroom. Honestly, you have no idea where this flute even came from. Things seem to appear and disappear around here all the time, especially to your unending chagrin. Any sort of large orange gourd that might be around. You consider throwing the flute down in disgust. On second thought, it was a perfectly nice flute, and there is no reason to take your frustration out on it. You just need some practice. But before you capture lock the flute, you will need to set your fetch modus first. Oh boy. You have a wide variety of fetch modi to choose from. You are really excited when your grandpa bought you this modus set for Christmas. He is a total badass. I'm scared. A little strict. You typically opt for the memory modus when it comes to matters of day-to-day -day practicality. You set your modus to memory and capture log the flute. You allot nine cards to the modus from your deck, since that will be more than enough for your needs at the moment. The modus grabs nine more cards for matching purposes. The flute is split up onto two blank cards and mixed randomly into the grid. To retrieve the item, you must first pick one card, and then pick its matching card. 
What? For the typical Siladexa, this modus presents a frustrating guessing game to end a lot of wasted time on mismatching. But you like it because you seem to have a knack for always guessing things right on the first try. Squeal like a piglet and fertilize some plants, Jade. It is an awfully silly idea and is basically a waste of everyone's time. You will predictably disregard this thought and focus on more sensible objectives at once. <laughs> oh my god, this is so much fun! You capture log the bag of fertilizer. You decide to consult your colorful reminders. You tend to have a lot of things on your mind at once, and you can be a little bit forgetful. So you keep a variety of colored strings on your fingers as reminders. Each one means that there is something different to remember at a certain time. In fact, looking at your index finger reminds you that there is something important to remember now. It is your friend John's birthday. The green string also reminds you that John's birthday package will arrive today. The blue string also reminds you that John's birthday package will arrive today, though in a way that means something slightly different. You are further reminded that you have some things to do outside of your house soon. But you should stop by your room first for supplies, and most importantly to see if John is online to wish him a happy birthday. Now, how about you capture log the pumpkin growing next to you? You snap up that pumpkin which seems suitably ripe for the taking. Hopefully the safety of your Silidex will prevent it from being spirited away, like so many of its ephemeral predecessors. You make your way to the middle of the garden atrium, where a stairwell joins the four atrium wings. Upstairs is your grandfather's laboratory, as well as your bedroom. Your memory modus is hardly any fun without much stuff in it, so you decide to stock up on fresh produce to fill up some more cards. You pick a juicy red crab apple. And you go and pick a nice looking key lime. Then, a delicious mandarin orange. Those are your favourite. And finally, a ripe yellow eureka lemon. Modus fun aside, you feel it is impossible to have too many fresh fruits and vegetables on hand. Jade, it is suggested that you go upstairs to the bedroom. Ha! You almost never use the stairs. You transportalize upstairs. Just above is your room. You enter your bedroom. On this side of the room, you are immediately confronted with numerous artifacts highlighting I'm looking your at our various shirt now. interests. You are an avid follower of cartoon shows of considerable nostalgic appeal. You have a profound zeal for marvelous and fantastical forms of an anthropomorphological persuasion. You have an uncanny knack for nuclear physics, and not infrequently can be found dabbling in rather advanced gadgetry. You enjoy sporadic fits of narcolepsy, your love of gardening transcends the glass confines of your atrium, and you are at times prone to patterns of precognitive prognostication. What? You consider very briefly the question, what will you do? But you quickly realize this is only one half of your room, and is therefore host to only half of your interests to choose from. Over here, there are yet more articles Why of the mentioned interests, and then some. Additional telltale signs of your enthusiasm for nostalgic television mingle with your assortment of game hunting firearms. You are a skilled markswoman, though your crosshairs would never settle on an innocent creature, anthropomorphically persuaded or otherwise. Your work table is littered with equipment to facilitate your tinkering. For you, experimentation is not particularly an exact science. You, and you lean heavily on sharp intuition for consistently and eerily optimal results. Nevertheless, you still have not been able to get that broad flat gizmo there to work, which is a design you have borrowed from one of your grandpa's more mysterious inventions. You are a great admirer of his, and you are not alone. Your father is a world-renowned explorer, naturalist, treasure hunter, archaeologist, scientist, adventurer, big game hunter, billionaire extraordinaire. He has taught you everything you know. And he's also Iron Man. But in spite of all his lessons, it is still difficult to escape his stern lectures when you are on your way out of the house to run your errands. He spends most of his time in the grand foyer, stewing in his own intensity and charisma. And today will likely be no exception. 
Among the errands that you have planned is to venture out and to find your pet and best friend named Becquerel. This animal must be fed and he will not be happy if he is not. And if he is not happy, then you will not be happy. But first, you should really dig out your computer and say hi to John. Now! What will you do? Say hi to John? You equip your trusty hunting rifle. There would be hell to pay if Grandad caught you leaving the house without it. But maybe you should wonder why the design on your shirt changed. There isn't much to wonder, really. You left the wardrobe of fire on its randomization setting. You may contemplate which shirt design you favour the most and commit to that setting in the near future. Jade, it is suggested that you capture log the nearest Squiddle's doll and hug it. Just before you can grab one, the powerful electromagnets concealed in their underbellies become activated. Tangle buddies! And the two of them get all tangled up with each other playfully. You capture log the Tangle Buddies. Jade, it is suggested that you lose interest in Fauna and never speak of it again. Bloody furries. Oh, but you could never do that. What marvellous creatures they are. What a daring dream. To combine the finest qualities of humanity with the elegance and nobility of the animal kingdom. How you wish you could know their world. To hear one night those muted paw pads traips up your stairs. A low but friendly growl unsettles your slumber. And as the sopa seeps from your eyes, they detect a sharp pair of ears cutting moonlight. A mysterious wolven tongue invites. Wouldn't these ears suit you? Would not this proud long snout assist you in the hunt? No need to answer. Words slough from the busy mind like a useless dead membrane as a more visceral sapience takes over. Something simpler is in charge now. A force untouched by the concerns and burdens of the upright. That farcical yoke, the bipedal toe. It now drives you through the midnight brush, your paws whisking through creepers, unearthing with each bold stomp bright odours demanding investigation. But not for long, as you and your new friend must claim the night with piercing howls moonward. You eat a weird bug, and don't even care. What? Uh, but maybe you should pick up your toys now, Jade. Speaking of which, is that Mr. Thornberry? One of your manthro chaps. More they Thornberg. are wonderful friends and always cheerful and pleasant fellows. Why, dear Mr. Coxcomb, how will you ever be received at the barnyard gala without the trappings of a proper gentleman? Each manthro chap comes with a number of accessories, including articles of formal attire, a vaccination kit, and a dishwasher safe slop trough. You then gather all your dolls into a rather cozy looking pile. Looks like an orgy. Moving on, you deactivate the wardrobe of fire's randomization mode and set it to cycle through these three shirt designs. The decision was tough, but you think you came to the best possible conclusion. You decide to look out of your window. It is another beautiful day in your neighborhood. It is peaceful and quiet as usual. A rather imposing volcano looms over your house, which has been inactive for centuries. Though dormant on the surface, the volcanic activity deep underground provides your house with a source of geothermal power. You are not sure why your grandfather decided to draw from this source of energy when he had the unlimited power of the atom at his disposal. Atoms but blow it up. has been this way for as long as you can remember. You have chalked it up to your family's long-standing propensity for eclectic fursuits. Wait, you mean pursuits? Jade, <laughs> it is suggested that you retrieve your fursuit from the magic chest. Oh, what is this nonsense about fursuits? You do not own a fursuit. You think anthropomorphic fauna are really cute and enchanting and all, but it has never occurred to you to dress as one. Sure, it is fun to imagine what it would be like to run wild with a pack of wolves, or purr and frolic with a litter of kittens, but dressing up as an animal just seems ridiculous. Yif, yif, yif. It would yif. still be just a silly girl draped in a raggedy synthetic tufty piece of crap. And seriously, who are you trying to kid with that sort of baloney? Anyway, it is not a magic chest. It is your gadget chest, which you have adapted for storing a number of useful gizmos. It was once your oracle's trunk, 
a gift from your grandfather, of course, and still contains many silly fortune-telling knickknacks, all of which are completely bogus. Among the fortune-telling knickknacks are these items. A crystal ball, plus compulsory velvet pillow, a tarot deck, a magic eight ball, a magic cue ball, and one of your favourite books of all time, Problem Sooth. Among the useful gizmos are of course your computer, which you keep inside a fun lunchbox for easy transport, and a couple of gizmos you keep handy so you don't always have to make the long trip to the kitchen. There is a cookalizer for preparing delicious meals, and a refrigerator, a name which clearly is a wacky variation on the much more common household item, the refrigerifier for cater. Moving on, you examine your magic 8 ball and magic cue ball. These things are stupid and useless. When the magic 8 ball isn't being frustratingly ambiguous, its forecast is always wrong. You have tested it numerous times with certain facts you know to be true. This is its reply when you ask it if it's your friend John's birthday today. See? Stupid! You guess maybe it could be used as a reverse prediction device, and you always trust the opposite of what it says. But that seems dumb to you, and anyway, this thing gives you a bad vibe. You might consider smashing it, but you are a little superstitious about whatever ominous consequences it might have, even if the occult talisman in question is a cheap piece of garbage. The magic cue ball, on the other hand, is said to make predictions with alarming precision and specificity. Unfortunately, it lacks a portal on its surface that allows you to view the prediction. You put both of these pieces of junk back in the box. You take the refrigerator. You may as well grab the cookalizer too. No portable kitchen is complete without it. You take your lunch top too, because obviously you're going to be using it pretty soon. Whoops, there goes your flute, but who cares? But before you go out to feed Beck, you will need to prepare a meal for him. You clear some space on your work table so you can set up your refrigerator and cookalizer. Just for fun, Jade allows you to take a stab at matching the cards to use the gizmos. It doesn't present much of a challenge for her, so she figures she might as well step aside while providing a few generous hints. No. No. Warmer. Warmer. Cooler. No. Cooler. Cold. Warmer. Yes, no, cold, ice cold! <laughs> you have selected the key line. Way to go. Hot, wait, no, cold, really cold, frozen fucking tundra! Hey! Congratulations, you advance your matching skill to the new level, Yukon Hero, Legacy of the Frostbite Amputee. Jade is beginning to regret breaking the fourth wall for this ill-advised escapade. Okay, one more shot at this. If it were known in advance how terrible you were going to be at this matching game, the author may have given a second thought to preparing this cool interactive flash application. Look at all these fruits on the loose. Good luck trying to settle them down. You just deploy the gadgets yourself. It is suggested that you stick the fruits in the refrigerator to keep them fresh. These fruits are unlikely to become less impudent anytime soon, regardless of where they are stored. But you stick them in anyway. <laughs> you take a look at the refrigerator's rotary interface. You wonder what he is in the mood for today. Steak. It is suggested that you press the steak button. Well, okay. It's a rotary dial, so there are no buttons to press. But whatever, that doesn't really matter. You dial up a thick T-bone steak, which you are sure Becquerel is in the mood for, because he is in the mood for steak every day and is never in the mood for anything else. But he does like his steak well cooked. Medium rare! You choose to lightly irradiate the steak. He does prefer his steak rare, after all. But you will not dignify the thought of turning the knob much further, because you are not retarded! <laughs> what? <gasps> How much drugs was the creator on when he made this? Jesus Christ. This is ridiculous! 
Please tell me that the size of this is perfect. No, it's not! It's unacceptable! Let me fix this, I can fix this. So much for maintaining this. Good enough. Wait, 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 wait. There we go. It's not over the yellow. Oh god, my OCD is gonna kill me one day. <laughs> if your steak is glowing green, bad. Imagine making Homestuck while not high in some shape or form. <laughs> no wonder Undertale is so weird. <laughs> the guy was probably, like, secondhand ingesting the fumes while in the basement. What is this music? You capture log the irradiated steak and save it for your trip outside. Probably shouldn't waste much more time. You wouldn't want all those nice depleted steak isotopes to settle down. You move over to examine the atomic base by your bed. You wouldn't exactly call it an atomic base, but it is heavily customized to accommodate a high level of musical virtuosity, the perfect instrument for the eclectically spirited. You've tuned the strings way down, of course, because your stumpy arms can't reach the low notes. Lol. You switch your eclectic bass to its advanced setting. But you probably switch it back, since obviously it is too complicated to play it in person like this. The default setting is your preferred mode for casual jamming. And since you can't possibly waste enough time playing music, casually jam is exactly what you're going to do. I swear I've seen this on that trailer thingy. Is that a you care then package? capture log the base and then take the portable amp from the wall socket too. You think to open your lunch top, but you like to make yourself comfy in a plushy pile before getting down to business with your computer. Jade, get down to business. Dragons? Le Fook? You activate Pester Chum and. Hey, look! John is online! Hooray! Also, it looks like Dave pestered you about something yesterday, but you missed it. You greet John, but he does not respond. He is undoubtedly gallivanting around his house in a state of barely restrained birthday mirth. He may also be retrieving the two packages and the two envelopes which you are certain came in the mail for him So earlier. this is just before Act 1 and 2. Gotcha. You will wait a little while and see if he returns before you head out. It is suggested that you check if Dave left you a sweet new wrap. It does not appear so, but you just never know of that crazy and cool guy. So cool. Are they gonna read this for me? I'm reading it. Hey. Oh, you're asleep again, aren't you? Or do you even know if you are? I still don't know how that works. It's like nothing means anything. It's so cool getting hella chumped by your coquettish damn riddles all the time. I don't know why I believe anything you say. I'm like the Grand Marshal of gross chumpage, waving around my faggoty chumductor baton. Assistant Director of Chumpography. Celebrated author Ernest Chumpingway. Wait, weak. Chumple still skin. Uh, Chumple dipshit. Yeah. You're asleep, yes or no? ASL? S equals species. Baboon? Kangaroo rat? If kangaroo rat, you have twice, please. 
Okay, well, yes, you're not no! in, so I guess whether you're non awake or unasleep or whatever, you're just not around and I'm wasting good material. Even worse, I'm wasting a killer persona here. Like, I don't know, like a wide open V shaped leotard and a fuck ton of body paint. Some like sinewy back arcing Cirque du Soleil looking motherfucker. Always low to the ground, getting a good prowl on, like I drop my keys in the dark. Nimblest son of a bitch who had the gumption to glue a nasty pair of latex cat lips to his face. For some reason, that wasn't a joke. Jade, hey? Where are you? Seriously, I'm sitting here tonight with a fucking bag of kibble jacked open on my lap and primed for goddamn bear. And you're gone. By the way, my name is Aquet Permusk. Hardest buttock in the jungle. Temperate steel. Hey, yeah, I just wanted to give you this remix I finished. Here. <laughs> So, yeah. You don't have to respond to any of that, by the way. I'll probably forget half the shit I said anyway. Talk to you tomorrow. You open Fresh Jam's media player and add Dave's remix to the playlist. What? Jade, open Echidna and go to MSPaintedVentures.com. GT, boggle vacantly at these shenanigans. It begins to dawn on you that everything you just did may have been a colossal waste of time. What is my life? You open your web browser and visit MSPA. You navigate to a random page in the middle of the latest epic. Looks like he was just finishing up some sort of weird tangential intermission here. Whatever it was, it clearly advanced the plot in no relevant way whatsoever. I am so confused. What is this, Soul Eater? Oh god, these guys. Kimbo AKs, wow, that's something. That's a hell of an intro. Huh. You've killed a little time, but well, the volume still no sign of John. Jade, Pester Dave. We've heard this conversation already. <laughs> Wait, okay, is this where we... Rose is online. Jade Pester Rose. I require a font of frighteningly accurate yet infuriatingly non specific information. Do you know where I can find a wellspring of this sort? <laughs> yes, okay, but we can't talk for long. You have plans? Well, yes, I do, but it's just that you'll lose your. 
internet connection soon, and we won't talk again for a pretty long time. Not until you enter. Enter? Yeah! This is what I was talking about. This was the itch that needed scratching. My avarice for the inscrutable is limitless. Well, what did you want to know? You've been insisting today was the big day. We would all play a game you didn't know the name of, a game you said I'd get in the mail and did, one that would help me answer some questions. But Strider is being obtuse. I can't catch John at his computer. You don't even have the game yourself. And on top of all that, my internet is unstable. So are you sure today is the day? And there sure are a lot of challenges, but yes, I am sure. Dave is cool. You know he'll come around when the time is right. He just has a lot of work to do first, and so do you. You'll need to keep searching for a stable signal and power source. It will be hard, but don't give up. <laughs> don't worry about me either. Focus on playing with John first. It all starts with you two. Is there nothing else you can say to prepare me for this? I'm sure you think little of blithely upsetting dark forces with Grandpa Moreau over there on Hell Murder Island, but honestly, I've only read a few books on it. <laughs> dark? That's ridiculous. I don't really know what to tell you other than that it's not going to be what you think it is. And most importantly, you will have all your questions answered. But they will be the ones you haven't thought to ask yet. Just be patient and brave and you'll see. It'll be fun. Uh-oh, looks like you've got to go. Take care, Rose. Jade, be the other girl. You are now the other girl several hours into the future. It appears a secret passage in the mausoleum has been opened. It's getting... Awfully toasty in here. You gather up your belongings, including your dead cat. Rose, descend. Jade, stop being the other girl and pester John again. You've spent enough time for now concerning yourself with the future of your friends. John will not be available until later. By then he will have his hands full, as will you. You pack up your lunch top and get ready to take care of some business downstairs. Jade, descend. Try as you might, you can't stop your mind from drifting to the fate of your friends. You dwell on a particular configuration of reminders on your finger, Well, that's just hacks. Have you tried a different strategy instead of the same one? Try something different! What the f- This is the definition of insanity. So, GG's like, in whatever the fuck world they're going into with the blocks. So it's not a game for her, she's in the game. Or it might not even be a game, it's a world. Jesus Christ. This is just so weird. There, there is no other way to describe it than absolutely weird. Like, that is the only way to describe this. And of course, every time I open it, it goes to a brand new default setting. Which it doesn't even make any sense, considering it doesn't even cover the whole screen. I don't even know what it's going for. But anyways, it is what it is. John ate the top shawl in the shed. I, I basically say the same thing to Hachan. I go like, Hachan wasn't the smartest girl in Japan. It's lucky that she's so cute. And she gets it, and she's like, wait, that's an insult. I'm like, no, it's a compliment. <laughs> Alright, let's continue. Act 3, part 3, fuck my life.
also in the future, but years, not ours. Under bare white branches, a sentry wakens. What? Oh, this guy? No, that's a different guy. Mailboxes? Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> of course, game facts. Oh, it's been a while. Is that even alive anymore? Immersive simulation. <laughs> oh my god. Is anyone actually reading any of this? Or are they all dead? <laughs> I don't know if anyone besides us is even alive and playing this game, or if anybody even really cares what I have to say. Rose said I should add some stuff to this FAQ if it occurred is. to me. So I guess I'm doing that. I figure, at the very least, it'll be a good reference for just us to use. But Dave probably won't read any of this because he's sort of this whopping stupid horse butt. Well, whatever. I finally figured out what those weird little codes on the back of the capture log cards are for. Well, maybe not what they're always for. But a way that Suburb has exploited them for in-game purposes. Every captured item stamps the card with a unique code, and a gizmo in Suburb called the Punch Desinix will punch a unique pattern of holes in the card, which is derived from that code. The punch card can then be used with the other gizmos to duplicate the item and or combine it with another item. I got to thinking about this, and with my amazing hacker skills, I noticed a trend. The whole pattern is based on a fairly simple cipher, converting the capture code to binary. And then the binary pattern is punched, where 1 is a punched hole and 0 is an unpunched slot. So, um, here's the table just to be clear. Right. There are a couple oddball characters, exclamation point and question mark, at the end. To bring it up to 63, 0 through 63 equals 64 total, i.e. 6 bits. Because the binary representation of the capture code characters are 6 bits each which have a range of 0 to 63. So, for instance, the capture code for the hammer is NZ7UN6BI. Look up the index for N first, which is 49. The binary of 49 is 110001. Keep doing this for all the characters you get. Okay. Okay, that's the pattern that will be punched for the card, but the bits are arranged top to bottom, left to right in four columns, like this. Wait, he worked this or out? Or punched on a card, like this. <laughs> he worked this out? Wow, okay, that pretty much looks like shit, but you get the idea. So to combine two items, you just overlap two punch cards. Only the places where both cards have a hole will show through. So it's sort of like a bitwise and operation on both cards. The new pattern gives you the code for a new item. For instance, combining the code for the hammer, NC7UN6BI, and a pogo ride, DQMJLEK, gives a new code with less holes, obviously, which translates to 126GH48G. That whole pattern went on to make the pogo hammer, which is so rad you have no idea. I've also wondered if you can combine items in other ways, like a bitwise OR. That means combining the cards to get more holes, not less, i.e. the new pattern has a hole for every hole on the either card. This pattern would be accomplished by double punching a card. Like, two codes, one card. I've gotta try that sometime. But there's some mysterious things about all this. First of all, with all the hole slots, there are 48 bits in total, which means there are 300 trillion possible codes and 300 trillion sounds huge. But when you consider it's supposed to be the account for all conceivable items, including all the wacky combinations and stuff, that it suddenly doesn't seem that big. This leads me to believe that not every combination of item has a viable duplicate. But this is kind of obvious anyway. Since there are many combinations of punch cards that will produce either a blank card with and or a total punch card with or, so there are lots of dud combinations out there, and many that will lead to the same pattern. Like for instance, a gun and an atom bomb will make a sort of ultimate death ray, but for that matter, a shoehorn and a potted plant could lead to the exact same pattern. So weird. Also, it seems like combined items will always have patterns with either much fewer holes 
or much more holes than the ordinary items, which will occupy the vast meaty middle of all possible items. It is strange and counterintuitive that more complex items will have simpler patterns, but hey, there you have it. But all this sort of makes me guess the system can be cracked some way. Like you have a complicated item and you want to extract the simpler item compounds from it. There might be an algorithm for deriving the pattern you want, or at least narrowing down the possibilities. There might also be ways of charting through the simpler patterns on both ends of the bit spectrum. And paying down the ones that will make cooler stuff, who knows. I want to ask Jade about this because she's really good with this sort of thing, somehow, and even she doesn't have my lead hacks or cred. Too bad she makes herself so scarce all the time. Jade, if you ever read this, let me know what you think. Wait, so where did he get the time to think about all this and write all this down in between getting beaten by two massive guys with a freaking tire swing as a weapon? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> you enter the laboratory. You look around for mad scientists. There are no scientists to be found, mad or otherwise. How or rich anyone is your for that family? Matter. This lab appears to be deserted. There is a kiosk, though. It looks like the kiosk monitors the lab's enormous hub grid. Chessboard? Jade, it is suggested that you transportalize as far down as you can go. This is as far down as you can go. The Grand Foyer is still a few floors down, but the transportalizer on that level is blocked by one of Grandpa's impressive big game trophies, and you just don't think that he would cotton to someone moving it. Speaking of which, here are some of his trophies now. He has a million of these ghastly things. You really dislike them. Jade, proceed. You hop down a level. Grandad also likes to accumulate valiant knights from his travels. These are pretty cool, you guess. Jade, keep going. Oh yeah. How could you forget about his stash of decrepit mummies? God, you hate these things. Jade, don't stop. This is your grandfather's collection of what he refers to as his beauties. No lovely lady will be fit for his collection unless her portrait has spent at least 20 years bleaching in the front window of a beauty parlour. A sort of establishment he's plundered no less frequently than ancient tombs. You guess they were sort of like your sisters while you were growing up, and you were always encouraged to look up to them. They were awfully pretty ladies, you suppose, but it was always hard to get as excited about them as Grandpa. Jade, study hard and keep your rifle at the ready! When adventure summons, I know you will rise to the task and take your rightful place among the daughters of Eclectica. That old coot sure is a bag of wind. Jade, complete your descent. You reach the ground level. This is the stupid thing blocking the transportalizer. It is unspeakably hideous. Down the southeast hall is the grand foyer. You have to cross through it to leave the house. Looks like someone is pestering you even though you thought you logged off. Hi again, idiot! Oh no! So, I guess today is finally the day you fuck everything up! Mm. Is there nothing I can do to change your mind? You can leave me alone! How can you even be talking to me after I blocked you? And after I logged out! You don't get that I'm better and smarter than you in every way, forever! You don't get that because you are incredibly stupid! I get that you're a jerk and you should shut up! Goodbye, you jerk! Rose, look at the kiosk. Looks like a mapping of each hub's index. It appears one of the hubs was recently unlocked. Rose, it is suggested that you go to the center and do a goofy dance. At the center, you find a little stage that looks perfect for supporting a spectacularly silly dance. Or it would if standing on it didn't make you a little nervous. And also if that didn't sound like a retarded idea given the circumstances. It looks like the sort of various contraption you've been deploying in John's house. 
You wonder what it does? Rose, attempt to plug laptop into nearby hub. Great. You just vaporized your dead cat. Oh well, ashes to ashes, you guess. There's got to be a better way to deal with this lousy tree. Rose examines her fetch modus. Looks like you can choose between picking leaves or awkwardly uprooting the whole tree as you've been doing. You select leaf. You also turn off auto balance since its consequences can be a little mystifying sometimes. You gather up all your items again in an order that places your laptop in a conveniently accessible leaf. You're not sure why you didn't do this a lot sooner. Kind of a funny looking tree now, but your concern for structural elegance is at an all time low. Rose, it is suggested that you find the unlocked hub. As long as you're going to plug in your computer, you may as well find that hub. Here it is. Hub SN underscore lab 0413. It is unlocked and thus removable from the grid. You suspect this was the same beacon transmitting the unsecured signal you were using earlier. You pick the laptop leaf from the tree. You plug your laptop into the hub, then capture log the hub and then the laptop. There must be a better place around here to set up your computer. This huge grid of electronics is sort of uninviting. You look around. Hey, what's that? It's another one of those ominous countdowns. You didn't notice it when you first entered the lab about a minute ago. It looks like this one may have been ticking for years. Whatever it's ticking down to, there isn't much time. You can only hope that when you turn on your computer again, there will be a connection invitation from one Mr. Strider. Again in the future, another timer winds down sideways. <laughs> Is that bullet Bill? <laughs> He's using the mailboxes. It's got legs? What the fuck? Is that a bomb? It's flat. What? <laughs> and this is still going on. Oh my god. Keeps happening. What does? You don't have the time to humor every random thought that pops into your head. The clock is ticking. What the fuck? Imagine beating up the person you're raising with a sword and throwing them down the stairs. I thought that was his brother. Kuma, does rich big game hunter who likes blue ladies sound familiar? It might be from Act 1, but he's a grandfather in this one. So weird. So fucking weird. <laughs> Can we take a quick two minute break to grab another coffee? The, uh, the amount of what the fucks has melted my brain. I need a coffee. <laughs> what do you think of Broken Mom? <laughs> Is it dangerous for people to be fighting with actual fucking swords? We've seen that thing has stabbed a bird. 
We know that it's dangerous. Welcome to Homestuck. The yiffing has broken my brain. I am so well caught. Oh god. I need- we need a two minute break. I need a coffee. My brain is gone. Let's take a quick two minute break. Let's grab a snack. We'll be right back. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus.